Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be going over some SAT practice. With the October SAT right around the corner, I thought this would be the perfect video to help you guys prepare for the exam. Number one, Solemn wants to purchase tickets from a vendor to watch a tennis match. The vendor charges a one-time service fee for processing the purchase of the tickets. The equation T equals 15 times N plus 12 represents the total amount T in dollars Solemn will pay for N tickets. What does 12 represent in the equation? When you see T equals 15N plus 12, what should immediately pop into your mind is Y equals MX plus B. In this case, the 12 is in the same position as our B, and we need to remember that B is our starting point or y-intercept. So if we look at the answer choices, the price of one ticket in dollars, the amount of the service fee, the total amount in dollars Salam will pay for one ticket, the total amount in dollars Salam will pay for any number of tickets. So if, if Salam were to buy one ticket, that would mean N would equal one, and the total cost would be 15 plus 12, which is 27. So it cannot be the price of one ticket. Um, or the total amount that Solemn will pay for one ticket. The answer is, this is going to be the service fee. The fee that Solemn needs to pay one time, it's, uh, an initial amount before he buys any tickets, he knows that he is going to have to pay that $12. So the amount of the service fee in dollars. For number three, what is the sum of the complex numbers 2 plus 3i and 4 plus 8i? 2 plus 3i and 4 plus 8i. The key word here is sum. We're looking for the sum of these two complex numbers. That means that we're going to add them together. When we're adding complex numbers together, the real numbers go together. 2 plus 4 is 6. And then the imaginary terms go together. 3i plus 8i will be 11i. And the answer will be answer choice C. Number two, a gardener buys two kinds of fertilizer. Fertilizer A contains 60% filler materials by weight and filler, fertilizer B contains 40% filler materials by weight. Together, the fertilizers bought by the gardener contain a total of 240 pounds of filler material. Which equation models the relationship where X is the number of pounds of fertilizer A and Y is the number of pounds of fertilizer B. So we know that fertilizer A contains 60% filler material. That's going to be 0 0.6 times the number of pounds X. And then same thing for fertilizer B. It's going to be 40% filler material. That's going to be 0 0.4 times the number of pounds of fertilizer B, which will be Y. And the total amount of filler material will equal 240 pounds. And this is answer choice B. For number four, four squared, four X squared minus nine equals P X plus T times P X minus T. In the equation above P and T are constants, which of the following can be the value of P? We know that when we have two binomials multiplying together, as we do here, Px plus t and Px minus t. When we have two binomials multiplying together, we can FOIL to try to get back to this binomial. So Px times Px is P squared x squared px times negative t is negative ptx t 
t times px is positive ptx. And then finally, t times negative t is negative t squared. In the middle, when we combine these two terms, negative ptx plus ptx, they cancel out. And we're left with p squared x squared minus t squared. We're looking for the value of p. And when we compare this to what the equation is equal to, we can see that the coefficient of x squared is 4. So on the left side of the equation, we're going to set what the coefficient of x squared is, which is p squared, equal to 4. And to get p by itself, we have to take the square root of both sides, and we'll find that p equals positive 2, which will be answer choice A. Number five, which of the following is the graph of the equation y equals 2x minus 5 in the xy plane? The first thing that we want to think about in our y equals mx plus b equation is our starting point, which is our y-intercept. The y-intercept is always where we start, and the slope is how we change. The slope in this question is going to be 2. And we like to think of slope as a fraction. 2 as a fraction will be 2 over 1. The reason why we like to think about it as a fraction is because slope is rise over run. The top number is our vertical displacement. And the bottom number is our horizontal displacement. How we change up and down and how we change left and right. So first we're going to deal with this negative 5. You may know this as the y-intercept. So we're going to go to the y-axis. We're going to go to negative 5. And we're going to draw a dot here. This is where we're going to start off. And it's where we cross the y-axis. Our slope is 2. When we have 2 over 1, this means we're going to go up 2 units. And to the right 1 unit. We're going to move up 1, 2 at negative 3. And we're going to move to the right once. Our new point will be at 1, negative 3. And to find the graph, we just connect the two points. So as we can see, the only graph that looks like this is going to be answer choice D. Another way to think about this question is first, what's our y-intercept? Negative 5. A has a y-intercept that is not negative 5. This is a positive y-intercept. It cannot be A. B has a y-intercept of negative 5, so maybe it's B. C has a y-intercept of positive 5. It cannot be C. And D has a y-intercept of negative 5, so maybe it's D as well. The second metric to think of is our slope. But simply, is our slope positive or negative? Here our slope is positive 2. This means that from left to right, we need to be increasing. And when we compare B and D, if we look at B from left to right, we're going down. And for D from left to right, we're going up. So therefore, the answer is D. Number six, if X equals 2 over 3 times Y and Y equals 18, what is the value of 2X minus 3? The answer to this question will be whatever 2x minus 3 is. This is what we need to evaluate. The problem is that we don't know what x is. That's what this simple system of equations is going to help us out with. We have that x equals 2 over 3 times y. And we have that y equals 18. So instead of y in this other equation, we're going to substitute it for 18 x equals 2 over 3 times 18 equals, when we have a fraction times a number, I like to get the number divided by the bottom, 18 divided by 3 is 6, and then multiply it by the number on top, 6 times 2 will be 12. Now the answer is not 12, and notice the answer choice C is 12. Remember, the answer to this question is going to be whatever 2 times x minus 3 is. Now we know 
that x equals 12. Now that we know that x equals 12, we can substitute x for 12. And we'll have 2 times 12 minus 3. 2 times 12 is 24 minus 3. 24 minus 3 is 21. And that'll be answer choice A. For B, it says the table above shows some values of the functions W and T. For which, of the f uh, for which value of X is WX plus TX equal to X? So that what they want us to do is add the values here in each call in each row together we're going to add for each row the blue and the green and we're going to see if it equals this red circle so first we're going to do this first row we're going to do the blue one negative one plus the green one negative three and then this needs to equal one does negative one minus three equal one no it doesn't so it's not going to be this first one. The answer will not be 1. Because when x equals 1, um, wx plus t of x does not equal x. So it can't be 1. We'll try 2. wt is 3. t of x is negative 1. And x is 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. So this is going to be the answer. When x equals 2, t of x plus w of x equals x. We can look at 3. Uh, we can try c and d just to be safe. For c, that's x equals 3. When we add w, t, and t, uh, w, x, and t, x, 4 plus 1 is 5. And that's not 3. So it can't be 3. And then for 4, if we add w of x and t of x 3 plus 3 is 6 which is not equal to 4 so it cannot be d either the answer is going to be b a bricklayer uses the formula n equals 7 times l times h to estimate the number of bricks n needed to build a wall that is l feet long and h feet high which of the following correctly expresses L in terms of N and H. So I read this question, but in order to go through the test quickly, you do not need to read this question. If you look at your answer choices, you see that for all of them, we're solving for L. We have L equals, L equals, L equals, L equals. And when we look at the question, we see that N equals 7 L H. So just by looking at this equation and looking at our answer choices, it's evident that we need to try to get L by itself. We have to think about what's around L. We have 7 and we have H. Next, we need to think about how these two terms correlate to L. Well, 7 times L and L times H. So both are correlated to L through multiplication. We have to do the opposite to get rid of them. So we will divide by 7h on both sides. On the right side, the 7h cancels on top and on the bottom, and we're left with L. On the right side, we have n over 7 times h. So L equals n over 7 times h, which is answer choice C. Finally, the last one for today, number 9. We have the square root of x plus the square root of 9 equals the square root of 64. Now you may be tempted to remove all of them from the square roots and say x plus 9 equals 64, which is not how we do this. And when you subtract 9, we will get that x equals 55 which is one of the answer choices, but once again, we cannot use this method. This is incorrect. Instead, what we need to do is evaluate the square roots. Square root of x, we can't do anything about yet, plus 
square root of 9 is 3. And this is going to equal square root of 64 is 8. To get x by itself, we need to move this plus 3 over to the other side by subtracting 3. We're going to get that the square root of x equals 8 minus 3, which is 5. And the last step would be to square both sides. The square root of x squared is x. And then 5 squared is 25, which will be answer choice C. If you learned something new in this video or want a better SAT score, whether you're taking it in October, November, next year, um, subscribe to the channel, like this video so it gets pushed out to more people, and I'll see you in the next one.